um, I feel like there is huge maternal paternal vibe in this spread and that's why I mentioned that um and the message that came out while I was shuffling is um, I feel like this state of emotional balance is, is really happening in your life, okay? Balancing work life and personal life. Balancing your emotional worries with the emotional practicality. So I feel like things are, are just kind of really balancing out in your emotional state. And I feel like you're not, you know, constantly... Um, uh, steeped in anxiety and worries about the future what's going to happen three months from now four months from now you're more a little uh, you're more about accepting this is where I'm at in this present moment nothing is going to bat nothing bad is going to happen for me or nothing bad is happening right now so I'm just going to focus on this moment and make the most of it so you're being very appreciative you're being very grounded and you're you're very much you know in the present moment and taking care of things and, you know, getting, um, allowing life to just kind of move along, you know, at its own pace rather than projecting so far into the future like most air signs uh, tend to do. And um, what I feel here in your love relationship sector, um, I do sense a little bit of trust issues coming from your partner to you or you to your partner. Okay, so the energy can be vice versa. It flows both ways. But this is the way that you see your partner. We have here the Seven of Swords. The Seven of Swords can indicate some type of... Um, um, it's like doing things behind the scenes. Doing something a little bit sneaky, a little bit stealthy, not wanting people to uh, know about it, not wanting to, um, people to you know expose you or, or find out about it. And this is the way in which you see your partner. You might find them to be a little bit sneaky. You might find that they are possibly a little bit manipulative. Um, I see some snooping. This is sort of like, you know, uh, breaking into a museum, trying to steal the artifact, trying to avoid all the lasers and the security camera. This woman is kind of stealthy. And um, I don't know why she's not walking around where the... the um, the pavement is, she's like treading on water, trying to cross over something because she doesn't want to be detected. She doesn't want to be seen. And those things in the background, I feel like they're they're flowers, but they look like eyeballs. So, so somebody's snooping. Somebody is like stealthily looking at somebody's emails, uh, social media messages, cell phone messages, text messages, phone calls. Um, possibly checking your phone logs. So I feel like it's somebody that has access to you. So you might be in a relationship, you might live together, you might cohabit. And um, if this doesn't resonate with you, you know, then your partner is not snooping. Okay. But either way, I feel like you are aware that there's something, um, some insecurities are being stirred up about your partner. The way that you feel about them, we have here the Four of Pentacles. This is a person who is very possessive, gets jealous quite easily. And the, the, the funny thing, so Four of Pentacles is like the miser, the person that's hanging on very, very tightly to their possession. You know, you belong to me. You know, um, you're, you're not a person, you're an object and you belong to me. So in its worst manifestation, it could be that that you belong to me, you don't belong to anybody else, you belong to me. In a milder manifestation, it could be someone who's quite jealous, who's quite possessive of you. They don't want you to go out and, you know, uh, have um, male or female friends because it, it stirs up insecurities within them. They might also be clinging on to this relationship for financial reasons. So there are lots of manifestations of this card. Um, what I was going to say is um, people express jealousy in different ways. So there are some people that, you know, are it's, it's a really difficult feeling to, I guess, um, admit to and to express. It makes us feel so vulnerable and it makes the it's like as an air sign, I feel like if you're jealous, you would never express it. Because air signs have this thing about, you know, not wanting to be vulnerable, wanting to be above, quote unquote, the human emotions. If you tell somebody, you know, uh, don't talk to that guy, it makes me jealous. 
then the person might flaunt it and say, oh, you care about me or you like me and that's why you're jealous. And yes, it's true. It's true. You, you like them and that's why, you know, if you don't like them, they can talk to whoever they want. It wouldn't spark jealousy within you. It's when you like somebody that, you know, you, you want them to yourself and you get jealous if they're uh, being too cozy or too friendly or too flirtatious with somebody else. So you might be dealing with someone who thinks you're a flirt, who thinks you're flirtatious or too cozy with other people. And so what I'm getting at here, and I think I'm doing it very poorly, is somebody, the way that people express jealousy is, is very different. There are the manipulative kinds that, uh, you know, try to wear down your self-esteem. You know, they say things to uh, undermine you, to undermine your beauty, your achievements, your sense of self-worth, because they don't want you to leave them. And they, they will say and do these things that can be very, very detrimental to your self-esteem. And then the others um, might try to physically prevent you from, you know, flirting, from going out with your friends, from having a social life because they are afraid someone's going to scoop you up. And then there are others too, where, you know, they're a little bit more high-minded, hopefully, and they let you do your thing. But once they've had it, they will walk out. They won't say anything. They, they'll just walk out. And so... You might be dealing with all three of those combinations or you might be dealing with, you know, somebody that exhibits some of those traits. But either way, there is some uh, trust issue. There, there are trust issues, excuse me, between you and another person. And I feel like, you know, they're, they're a little bit more on the self-contained jealous side where they are possessive of their partner but they also believe in the sacred and the, sanct the, the sacredness and the sanctity of a relationship. A relationship is between two people and that's how it should be. And they, they truly believe in that. And so if they see you flirting, if they see you out and about, you know, um, socializing with a lot of people, they, they won't trust you. They won't want to get involved with you. Even though they like you, they might turn you down if you make an offer because they don't trust that you are monogamous, okay? And then there are others as well that will um, try to undermine you or, you know, will act very aloof towards you and they might say hurtful things to you, even if they like you, because they don't want to feel vulnerable. So you're dealing with, like, someone who is quite defensive. And I feel like if you're in constant conflict with another person. It doesn't even have to be over flirtation and jealousy. You're dealing with somebody that has trouble apologizing. When they're wrong, they don't apologize. And it can be very manipulative. It's like you're, you're trying to get to the bottom of an argument. You already know what, you, you already know the truth. And then, you know, they kind of throw it back at you. And they kind of make it seem like your fault. So, for example, you check their phone. You're like, who's this uh, lady that you're talking to? Rather than answering you, you know, oh, this is my coworker. This is my friend. This is my uh, side woman. They throw the, the, the argument back at you. And they're like, why are you going through my phone? Right? So, for those who are dealing with that, it's a diversionary tactic to throw you off. And it's because they, they know they've been caught. They don't want to apologize. And they're not going to apologize. So you better check yourself out of that relationship, Libra, if you're dealing with that. So either way, I do see trust issues. I see manipulation as well. And I see somebody getting very defensive when they're confronted with some wrongdoing. Okay? And um, it's not healthy for you to stay in this. Um I feel like many of you have broken up with somebody that has done you wrong. You're trying to move forward. This is the energy that you exude here, the judgment card. This is moving forward, new beginnings. Whatever new relationship you've been praying for, I feel like it's on the verge of happening for you. 
but you have to release exes. You have to release past resentments. You have to release past trust issues. You have to release crushes and relationships that are built on power struggles, dominance and submission rather than, you know, true harmony and two people coming together and at a level playing field. So aiming for relationships that are not about, you know, conflict and, and submission and dominance and um, uh, power trips and control issues, moving forward to something healthier, something better for you, something more in alignment with your Libran, balancing the scale energy, okay? And I feel like that's where you're headed right now. But there are still issues from the past that you need to overcome. Um, the way that your love interest or the other person sees you or the way that people around you sees you, we have here the Five of Wands. This indicates an internal conflict. And I just have to say this, Libras, you're very, very calm and just very balanced on the surface. But I feel like for some of you, it masks something underneath. There are times where you want to, you know, give somebody a piece of your mind, but you don't because you're diplomatic. And there are times where you want to, you know, kind of um, uh, uh, be it, it, it's like you're in a room in a board meeting and there's that elephant in the room nobody wants to address. You want to just, you know, stand up on the um, podium and just address the elephant in the room, but you don't do it because of that sense of propriety. You don't get off on um, putting people in awkward situation. You're not confrontational. You're not like... Um, you're just not a jerk. You don't want to put people in bad situations. You don't want to inconvenience people. You don't want to upset, you know, like rock the boat. And I feel like for, for those who are dealing with this, years and years of emotional repression can also have its detrimental impact on you, where you're kind of living this provisionary life, doing what people expect of you and yet not being able to really voice your opinion and, and to do things the way that you want. And some people, it's a smart strategy to get ahead in life, like professionally, right? To be like the nice guy and to uh, have everybody kind of uh, look up at you and admire you. But at the same time, if you're never able to voice your opinion, if you feel like you have to censor yourself around, you know, in everything that you do, it can take its toll on you and then you can, you know, lash out at inopportune moments, lash out at the wrong people or just, you know, um, your aggression. It has to go somewhere, right? Energy has to go somewhere. So the frustration and the aggression might be internalized or it might it might like find an outlet in the wrong way. So that's just something I want Libras to be a little bit careful of because that's what's showing up here inner conflict, wanting to do certain things but facing certain restrictions like um, social propriety, social expectations, uh, want, not wanting to, you know, rock the boat, wanting to be the nice guy. And so we are just deliberately inoffensive. And the way that people uh, outside look at you, you're able to handle a lot of things. You don't buckle under pressure. People can get a rise out of you, but you're kind of like like the um, the calm lake. Okay, you you don't give out under pressure. You internalize everything, and I feel like it might not be completely healthy. It's very admirable, I feel, but it's not completely healthy. So find healthy ways to be assertive. We don't have to be a jerk to be assertive, but we have to stand up for ourselves. We have to learn to be assertive, and we have to learn to draw boundaries with other people. Okay. I feel like you're on the, the path to drawing boundaries. You're on the path where you are overcoming this internal conflict within yourself. You might also be dealing with somebody who really pushes your buttons, who is defensive, who is avoidant. Like they, they won't admit when they're wrong. And you have the same fights over and over and over and over again. But this card can also indicate a lot of passion that we have towards another person. And you're trying to get a new beginning with this new person. You might be dealing with a fire sign here. Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo. I also have Earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. 
I also have air signs, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. So I feel like there is a situation that you've been praying for, but you're kind of like one day praying for it, the next day backing off. So you're being very wishy-washy about your intentions. You want to build something solid with another person, but you have to let go of ghosts from the past relationships. You like a person. They're also maybe not able to open up to you because they're not really sure what your intentions are. So I see a lot of inner conflict within you. You're praying for a new start. And we have the new start here, the Ace of Pentacles. This is a beautiful card that indicates a relationship can be built on this. It's very slow. You're hoping to speed up the timeline. You're hoping for something to break through, to culminate that, you know, the little leaf poking out of the, the ground. Wanting a new start, wanting something to just start already. And the other person might be very, very hesitant to making this new start, okay? Earth signs in general, if you're dealing with one, they're, they're very slow. And they also need uh, assurance. If, you, if they see you as someone who's flirtatious, they're not going to go for it. And if you're dealing with someone who's, you know, manipulative or whatnot, you don't get yourself in that situation, okay? Um, in other areas of your life, I feel, well, actually, let me just finish this off. Um, there is communication here, but we need to communicate in a way where it's, um, it's more conducive to meaningful communication rather than just, you know, mindless banter back and forth, like being the social butterfly and just chit chat that don't really have any substance. We need to communicate in a meaningful way. We need to tell the other person what our intentions are. Never mind the, you know, uh, rejection. Never mind, like, just put it on, on the line. Um, I feel like they, they're they waiting. They like you, but I feel like they're waiting for some type of a gesture from you, something concrete, okay? So hence the Ace of Pentacles. This is like concrete actions in the real world that we can see rather than just, you know, praying and hoping. We need to get our hands dirty and we need to just make this move, okay? So if you like somebody, that's what needs to happen because otherwise I don't see things moving in the direction that you're hoping for. Um, in other areas of your life, what I do feel here is this balance that's happening for you. I have here the King of Cups and the King of Wands, okay? Knowing when to sit back, knowing when to step up, it takes, it's a long process. It's a long process for every sign to learn. Knowing when to not jump the gun, knowing when to hold back, knowing when to go for it, knowing when to kind of uh, relax and, and trust that the universe will take over. So this is the balance of the drive, the ambition, and the emotions. So balancing the passion, balancing the emotions. And I feel like you've got it. You've got a good balance here. I feel for many of you, um, there are... Lots of communication coming from other people to you. And I keep seeing an ex, okay? Somebody from your past, um, possibly a water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. There's communication. And I feel like you're very, very busy. Somebody from the past. Um, it doesn't even have to be a relationship partner. Somebody that you've known, went to school with, worked with, um, known casually, whatever the situation might be. Um, they're trying to give you some type of communication. They're trying to solicit you for some type of travel. Traveling to see you, traveling together, traveling overseas. I see air travel. And I say that because of this Eight of Wands here. And I feel like they're trying to make a connection. What I'm also feeling as well is for many of you, there is this really, re if you have children in particular, You've been doing a really good job raising them. You're making sure that they're fed. You're making sure that they're enrolled in extracurricular activities. You're making sure that you take them to soccer practice, that you not only drive them home, but drive some of their friends home sometimes. You're doing, like you're going above and beyond to make sure your little ones are going to succeed in the world. And there's a lot of personal joy and satisfaction. It's almost like coming to the realization of, wow, I did not know I could love this deeply. I did not know that parenthood could bring me this much joy. King of Wands, which is a paternal figure, and then we have the Ten of Cups, which is um, family, 
completion, happiness, and it's just, you know, emotional exuberance, especially for those who are married or who have children. You're protective of them, you're raising them well, you're teaching them things, they're achieving a lot in life because of your care and attention. So I feel overall, when it comes to children, this is going to be a really, really beautiful week. Um, a lot of people do take their children trick-or-treating, so um, I feel like that is also an energy here where the, the fun and the excitement, everything is sparked off in a really nice way, okay? I'm going to leave it at that, Libras. Be wary of people who are controlling and especially manipulative, okay? That's my only warning. I think everything else, you've got it, okay?